So the show was um, was inspired by a true event, but um, you know, as we started to craft what the characters in the story would be, what the journey of the characters would be, um, we sort of we sort of looked at um, keying in on one character, Evan Hansen, um, who is a high school student who is um, uh, uh, intriguing and entertaining. Uh, and uh, and funny, but also very lonely and looking for connection. And we sort of settled on this world of characters who all in their own ways are looking for and searching for connection. And um, we, we created a story uh, by which this one young man um, fell into a circumstance where he was looking, uh, where he was sort of with a, with another family who was looking for a for a son. They had lost a son, and he was looking for a family in a certain way. And and I think what we always wanted to do was to write a show that ultimately um, celebrated connection and celebrated hope, celebrated finding oneself, finding one's own true identity. Um, and the character really takes quite a journey in this show um, and ultimately has to face himself and face some truths about himself that maybe he doesn't want to face. But through that, there's a real discovery of one's true self and authenticity and true connection and what that looks like, connection with his own mom, connection with his friends in school, connection with the community around him. Um, and, and I think that was always sort of guiding our writing as we created the show and created the characters was celebrating that connection and, and finding hope. Well, and I think, you know, from the beginning we wanted to write a show about today, um, or today seven years ago. Um, <laughs> but, but the world we live in today, which feels like we are both inundated with connections and, you know, you pick up your phone and you have thousands of friends right there to talk to at any point in time. Um, but also people feel lonelier than ever and feel disconnected and feel like they don't understand each other and there's so much polarization and so much separateness. Um, and I, this is a story, I think, about a character who, like many of us, presents one fit version of himself to the world yeah. um, and has to kind of confront the truth of who he actually is behind the Instagram posts and the Facebook profile. And in a, in a lot of ways, it's also about parents and children and it's mm. about the... the version of your kids that you think you know and who they might really be privately and and the sort of the wish and the desire that we all have to connect to our parents and that parents have to connect to their kids and all of the sort of messiness that comes in between what blocks that and prevents that and at the core of it it's a story about these two families and and a kid who really is trying to find a way to connect with his mom and a mom who's really trying to find a way to connect with her son and uh, over the course of the story through a very very wild and uh, <laughs> And uh, up, up and down, crazy sort of uh, turn of events, you find they can kind of reconnect and, and get past all of the difficulties that were sort of blocking that, that connection in the first place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, it was definitely surprising um, to us um, as the writers. You know, we, we wrote it, we wrote the show really for ourselves and for the people that we were working on the show with. It was never something that we planned to. to that we'd ever get to be here in London uh, having a production of the show. Um, but, you know, our goal was to write something that felt real and felt true to life. I mean, for Benj and I, so much of our work was based on what we felt like Stephen Levinson was doing. Mr. Stephen Levinson, right here. Um, <laughs> this person. And and the way that these characters speak in the show um, and, and the heart and the humor of it uh, is so, I think, authentic. I can say that because he won't say that about himself, but I can mm -hmm. say that. Um, it's so authentic and feels so relevant. And I think that as people came to see the show, they saw themselves in the characters. They saw themselves in the story. Even some of the questionable things or the ambiguous moral decisions or whatever, I think we all can relate to that to a certain extent. Um, and I think... Uh, th some of that response was due to people feeling like, hey, I feel like I'm watching some of my own life up on stage, and that's a really uh, cool experience. And we, sometimes we go to the theater to escape, and we go to the theater to see a story from another world or another era. Um, but with this show, you come and you get to experience um, a, a, a musical that that I think relates to your own life and feels like um, uh, what it what it feels like to all of us right now to maybe have anxiety, to maybe be trying to navigate every day with the decisions that we make, with the connections we're trying to make. Um, and I think a lot of the response has to do with that. 
I think that would be bad. <laughs> I think right. I mean, I think I think the best writing, um, at least that I know how to do, comes from the character and comes from the story. And and if you're being truthful to really following the emotional reality that you're creating, then hopefully something that you tap into, other people can tap into and find the um, the humor or the pathos in it. Um, I mean, sometimes you're writing things. And you hope that they land a certain way, but it's often a fool's errand, I think, to try to uh, to under to try to anticipate how an audience is going to respond because you really never know. And I think that the, the only thing I'd say with as in writing this show, I think something that we were con- always conscious of was, you know, it does touch on a few subjects that are more impactful and maybe deep and and and, and emotional, and so we were always looking to to make sure we balance that out with humor and with fun. Um, um, that there, that there are, there's, you know, in the middle of this musical that you might feel is a little heavy at times or something. There's a big choreographed dance number with the three boys on stage, and and we're always, I think, we were trying to find ways of balancing all of that because, um, uh, you know, if people cry at a show, it's much more meaningful if they've been laughing a lot too. And so I think that was something that was maybe always in our minds, but I, but definitely yeah. not not the sort of but certainly <laughs> craven think, mad yes, of like no, but I you think, will cry, you will yes. laugh. <laughs> but no, I think you know, yeah, we we always wanted to make something that would feel uplifting, not in a hokey way, but in, yeah. in a real way, like it would really feel like you had gone through a full experience of a story that, like all of our stories, has ups and downs yeah. and highs and lows and. And in the end, would 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 feel affirming in some sense. Oh gosh, for me, the show was Rent when I was younger, and and to me, Rent was such a show that you know I, I didn't understand the experience of living in New York City and being a twenty something, you know, growing up in the suburbs and not having that experience. But it was something that I found to be this world that I wanted to be a part of so bad, or that I I, I thought I, I saw people that that you know maybe I could be like one day. You know, there was such representation in that show, which I think really mattered. Um, I think what's so cool about Dear Evan Hansen and the way that we tried to craft it is that um, that you see people who are like you, you know, and so often in the theater sometimes you go to escape, but sometimes you go to see people who remind you of the things that you're dealing with and the, the, the things that are funny or because they're the little funny things that are happening in your kitchen every day, you know, and, and being able to see that uh, reflected back to you on stage is something that I think we really wanted to try to create. So for me, like, Rent was something that I... I Loved and I love the contemporary nature of it, and I love that it showed the world um, that not I, that I was directly living in, but one that I sort of aspired to be a part of, um, and and uh, yeah, showing America in that way um, was a big inspiration for I think how we wanted to craft Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah, for me it was Rent too. That was so huge. It was just it was also like the first cast recording I'd ever seen that had a parental advisory sticker on it. And that was cool. Yeah, that, that was so amazing. <laughs> it was, it was like, something, oh, then I want to yes, like that. Yeah. <laughs> it felt like it felt dangerous in a way and it felt um in a way that musicals weren't supposed to. Uh-huh. And and therefore it felt like it felt like it was talking to me and to to even though again I was a kid in the suburbs, <laughs> but it felt like it was about young people and about the world we were living in and not Um, it wasn't pandering to my parents like everything else um, in theater was and and so it felt like it was mine and my friends and we got to kind of own it and that was incredibly exciting I'm good with those answers (laughs) Mame Mame I mean more likely yeah yes yeah, I think that's I think that's something that was really important to us, um, to our director, to our producer, to everyone involved with the show. That this really, um, we never wanted this to be a show, but they thankfully really um, encouraged us in this. We never wanted this to feel like a teenage show or a high schooler show. Um, that it was a show about our world, and and so it's it's very much about. Uh, parents and kids and and that intergenerational relationship and how we relate to each other how the parents relate to each other and there's a little bit of class questions in there and all of that I think that we wanted to really make this feel like no matter who came to the show you have someone to relate to Um, whether it's a a parent some oftentimes we get adults who say I relate to the high school kids because that's how I felt in high school and we have them also saying I relate to that 
mom who can't connect with her kid, but she's desperately trying. That's how I am. And like now I can get my kid to talk to me because we talked about them in the show and 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 that started a conversation. So um, it was always important to us that um, though the plot happens to take place centering around a high school kid, that um, that the subject matter, that the decisions, that the um, that, that the balance of all of it not center around high school world, but really just about our world and existing right now. Um, to, to have a full f- fleshed out story and a full fleshed out characters, it was important. You know, some some of our parents in the story have some of the more uh, the the sort of more impactful song moments as well, because we really wanted to make sure that it, it was their story too. Uh, I guess for for us when we think about writing songs for film it's really a similar process in how we're writing them in that we're trying to just be true to the character and we're trying to just get uh, be authentic and, and use lyrics and, and, and create music that feels like it could come out of the character's mouth believably um, I do think that you know the director plays a really really big difference um, in terms of how that then hits an audience you know if we're writing a song for a film, then they're really in control. But in the theater, it's such a visceral experience because you're literally feet away from a character pouring their heart out or their emotion out. That I think that we need to be a little um, very specific about how we sort of craft that because you're literally in the same room and you're literally experiencing something in real time with another breathing, living human being. Um, so I think uh, I think that there's a little bit more sort of maybe... A distance, I, I, I would say, when you're writing for film, um, and we're just really, really mindful that in the theater it's a collective, shared experience, and you sort of can't uh, escape the highs and the lows of, of this the, this thing we're all experiencing together. I think I think also as songwriters, we sometimes, um, depending on the style of the show or the style of the score, will sometimes know that I mean we're writing it for a film that the burden of the storytelling is sometimes a little bit more shared or even more on the director or more on the other storytellers that we're working with whereas in a theater we really know that the song needs to be able to stand on its own and live and die by what it's what the character is saying now there are exceptions there are moments where really the 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 choreography or the direction what the characters are doing uh, on stage takes the, takes on the burden of the storytelling. But in film, just the fact that we can go to so many locations, that we can tell one story and show one story while singing another one, there's just a little bit more of a shared burden of the storytelling, I think. Um, you know, but that said, there there are songs, even in Dear Evan Hansen, where we really rely on our director and rely on projections and things like that to help tell the story while our song is uh, being sung as well. Yeah. How about you? Well, I think, well, it's really true. I mean, yeah. Okay. So Yeah. Okay. No, it's interesting because interesting the screenplay um, is written so much to, to direct the camera on mm. what to do. Like, that's really what it is, the blueprint for how to film a movie. And a play script is so much, there's so much more room in it. You're not really telling the director what to do. You're more saying, here's a kitchen, and here are the people in the kitchen, and this is what they're saying. But you're not saying... You know, this is what we see on the screen. Yeah. And so it's, in a way, a, a film or TV script, you, you have to be more disciplined in how you're approaching it because you just don't have all of that air. Um, and there's so much more economy. That's what I find is the big difference. I mean, like a, a two-page scene in a movie is, is, a, is, a, is a medium-length scene. And in, on a stage, that would be the shortest scene mm-hmm. in a show. So uh, it's, it's really, it's a different kind of heartbeat. I don't think we had any expectation of how British audiences would react to the show. It's set in America, and it has a lot of themes that we found relevant growing up, but we didn't grow up in London, so we, we didn't know how it would transfer. And it's been really, really, I think, uh, a huge relief to us, especially mm-hmm. when we saw early previews, that the same places that were getting laughs were getting laughs, and the same places where there were moments of uh, pathos you know, that came through. One of the things that I, I have a couple of British friends who've said this to me, the, the concept of like the stiff upper lip in, in London and, and how that's beginning to change. Um, and this show, I think, really sort of pushes the boundaries of uh, asking the question, do we need to keep all of our feelings inside or are we allowed to kind of express ourselves in a way that, that you know, we, we feel like we are making a more genuine sort of authentic connection with another person and uh, it feels like British audiences so I've been told and so we've experienced are really having an emotional and um, 
and really enjoyable experience at the show and uh, and that feels exciting to me because I, I didn't know whether it would be something that folks would put an emotional distance toward or whether they would really embrace and it feels like people are really going along for the journey along for the ride and really emotionally investing in the story that we're telling uh, at the Noel Coward Theater. Yeah, I'd say on a really superficial tacky level as like a tacky American like I think for us just really truly superficially I think um, you know I think growing up as theater kids in America you know your dream is always like Broadway something I'll go to Broadway I'll go to a Broadway show I could be in a Broadway show write a Broadway show you know that was our dream but that that said so I don't I don't give any discredit to that but that said having a show play in London for us as tacky Americans is like the creme de la creme it really is just feels like we feel so sophisticated having a show play like that doesn't mean we are and we really aren't but like yeah. it just feels there's something that feels just so very classy about it and also you want to just over. you want to name drop it all the time like yeah, in New York you're like, like oh it's in the West End yeah it's in the West End yeah, we have to so, fly over to London yeah, right now because our show's on the West End <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it just deal. feels it's a very yeah. um, it really um, comes with such um, such a sort of dignified um, thing to, well, we to, to also have a show came of age here. when you think of it like in the like in a, heyday of, of uh, London, British theater British musicals. yeah like those were the ones that were yeah like, we, they were coming to all us the in Revenues, the 90s those 80, were 90s, huge yeah. when we were kids that's yeah. true so I had a ton of British West End L- cast original recordings. cast recordings yeah true as a kid so I always I there's there's something really fantastical and incredible about having a show here yeah I'm sure I could take you to tons of less sophisticated. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. Go for it. Well, we, yeah, we started auditioning for the show a long I feel time. Like a year advance, before a year in advance of rehearsals, before maybe? rehearsals, yeah. And and we saw Sam, I, a few times um, in that process. Uh, he came to New York, very generously, um, and uh, as did a bunch of the other cast members. Um, and you just knew, you know, whenever we uh, have auditions for the show and we see people, there's an ineffable thing mm-hmm. that you're always looking for in any show and in any role. But particularly for Evan, there's there's a spark of some kind that everyone who's played that part has. And it's unique and different and it's it's hard to pin down, which is why it's not a simple thing to find this person because you're looking for something that only that person can bring and you don't know yeah. it until you see it. And that's Sam, I think, in a nutshell. I mean, he's someone who came in and 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 both, you know, brought that part to life but also put his own inimitable, you know, twist on it. Yeah, there's something there's something about the way that Evan has to um slide from speaking to singing to speaking to singing, um, facility with language facility with his vocals because because it's not an easy role to sing at all it's really rangy it's really challenging there's so much material he carries the show of of any show that you could think of this character really carries the show and um it when when someone plays the role and and does it right it's it you really feel like you're watching in sam's case a little star in the making or you're watching somebody who's just a star not because they're famous not because they're whatever but they just have that thing that they carry the story and the challenges of it on their back for two and a half hours and um uh, you know every time we get to see sam do the show and and in, in pre- rehearsals previews and and now watching him do it here at the Noel coward um you've you you leave the theater with what we are always hoping which is you leave the theater going I don't know what I just watched, but I just watched something amazing. This you got to go see this young man because he's doing something crazy, and I don't know how. He, the thing we always hear is like, "How does he do it six times a week?" or "How do they do it however many times a week?" And like, we don't know how they do yeah. it, but it it is it does leave you with that feeling because it feels like it's a, such an open-hearted, um, generous raw vulnerable performance where you go that person's leaving everything on the stage and giving everything on the stage um so it feels like you get it feels not to sound dr- overly dramatic but it sounds like you're receiving such a gift like when when you see the show because you're watching a human give their whole heart it feels like to you um and you get to hold it and experience it for two and a half hours so um it's it's an overwhelming experience 